Hello? Hi, Jean. It's Maria from B&H. Oh, hey, Maria. How are you? Good. I'm good. I heard you were getting ready for a road trip and some shoots, so I figured I'd call you up and ask you 21 questions. Is that okay? Oh, how fun. Yeah, actually, your timing is great. Hold on one moment, and I'll get my earpiece in. Awesome. All right. Can you hear me now? Yep. You sound great. Terrific. Oh, great. Yeah, so I'm just getting ready to, um, I'm packing up for my first road trip since spring training, February. So I'm very excited to say the least. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, what's this road trip for? Uh, so it's for grassroots baseball. It's uh, Route 66, uh, the, next, the next leg of uh, the journey. Um, so I'll be doing all kinds of uh, different shoots with baseball and um, mostly amateur baseball, also some landscape photography and some of the Americana along Route 66. Cool. So can you tell the audience about what type of photographer you are? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a sports photographer um, and I specialize in the game of, of baseball. Uh, and I document everything from the grassroots up to the major leagues and all the cultures that surround it. Amazing. And f sports photography is a little bit different than, say, portrait photography or landscape photography. So what's your go-to camera and lens for this? Uh, so my go-to camera and lens uh, for this, well, my go-to camera most of the time is, well, it's right here in my hand, it's the A92. Um, and the A9, and go-to lenses. My three workhorses are the 16 to 35, two, uh, yeah, 16 to 35, 28, and uh, my 70 to 200, and then my 400, 28. This big boy right here. Wow. Um, and I'm packing it all up. But this trip, um, I'm also going to be taking portraits. I have a few portrait sessions scheduled and some landscape, as I talked about, for um, just the Americana along Route 66 um, toward the end of the route. So I'm going to be using the A7 um, R4 for that. And then for the, for the portraits for the lenses, this is my new favorite lens. This 135, 1.8 Sony is just really makes really pretty portrait lenses. So I've also been using it for pre-game for a, kind of a different look, but um, I'm loving this one. Cool. And so I hear you're really involved with Sony as well. Can you tell me more about your role associated with them? Yeah, uh, so I'm a Sony artisan. Um, and what that means is we're ambassadors to the brand, um, and which is, uh, it's really fun and it's also an honor. It's fun because the gear and the technology really speaks for itself. So that makes our job very easy. And then why is it an honor? Well, it's an honor because I really think the brand for me aligns with you know, my values as a person and as a photographer. And I, I really like the things that they do, the outreach that they do, the Sony Alpha Female program um, has been just terrific. And they have a, uh, a new program they just started, um, uh, the Sony uh, Relief COVID-19 Fund, which um, is helping out photographers, cr creators um, who are in need because of the virus um, and haven't been able to get work or have hardships. So um, I'm just really, really pleased with what Sony's doing as a brand. That's great. And did yeah. the quarantine affect your workflow at all? It sure did, yeah. My, my workflow went sideways, um, but some good things came out of it. I worked on my archives quite a bit, my website, um, a lot of archive work, which was just terrific for me. And then working on this new project, Grassroots Baseball Route 66, got a lot of the writing done for the book, that, the book that's coming um, as part of the project. Um, so I certainly kept busy and you know, doing the things that we can control as, and the things we can't control like going out and shooting during this time. So, but uh, soon I'll be on the road doing a little bit of that as well. That's awesome. And so what got you into sports photography to begin with? Um, I was actually a, a portrait photographer, Maria. Uh, I started off in, in portraiture in Northern California, and then I started shooting for local newspapers there, sports, high school sports, college sports, and then met Michael Zagaris, the team photographer for the 49ers and Oakland A's. Um, and, uh, and he became my mentor, and I was able to shoot 49ers, A's, and started shooting Bay Area sports, and I just really never looked back. It was absolutely my calling. Every, every moment uh, 
out there shooting a game was just, I, I knew this is what I wanted to do. This is the type of photography that I was going to be pursuing for my career. And so is it tough sometimes being maybe one of the only females on the field? You know, um, it's really, it's really not, it hasn't been tough for me uh, being the only woman on the field. Um, you know, early in my career, starting off, especially in the Bay Area, the photographers, Bay Area sports photographers have been a very inclusive group with me and really have helped me all through my career. Um, and a few of them are my mentors and best friends now. And, and really, uh, it's just a great group. Um, and then to, now today, there's so many more female photographers that are out there shooting and, you know, really talented sports shooters. Um, so it's, uh, it's really nice to see the progress and seeing more women out shooting sports and, and doing a fantastic job. Yeah, that's for sure. And so what's your favorite part of your work? Favorite part of my work, uh, I would say, is the first time I'm going to a new place, a new field, um, a new sandlot, a new stadium. I love that moment of, okay, what's this going to be like? What are my backgrounds? Who am I shooting? What am I shooting? What's happening? I, that mm -hmm. feeling, it's kind of like a ship pulling into a new port. You know, and what's going to be there, and and then of course, who is going to be there? What's the culture of what I'm shooting? And because I'm traveling to so many different places, you know, baseball is different, and culture is different in all of these places. And uh, the new is very exciting for me and learning. And so you mentioned you uh, photograph a lot in the Bay Area. Are you have you always lived in San Francisco? Uh, no, I grew up in New York City, and um, I moved to San Francisco uh, in the 90s. What brought you there? A love story brought me here. <laughs> A lot, many things have kept me here. <laughs> <laughs> and so do you shoot other styles aside from sports? You mentioned portraits. Um, well, you know, other styles, that's interesting that you say that. I mean, I... I guess you can label me as a sports photographer, but it's almost like it's, it's kind of even not really a fair label because I do, to me, when you hear sports photography, you think of the long lenses and you think mm -hmm. of cargo shorts. And, I, <laughs> and, and for me, it's really what I'm doing is uh, I'm a storyteller. So I'm doing portrait photography. I'm showing cult, the cultural side of baseball. Baseball, sure, is the entree, but it's the entree into the culture. So. Action is exciting, but it's really not about a play at the plate or a play at second. Those are fun and that's exhilarating, but what I'm looking to do is tell the story around the baseball and, you know, where are we and give it a sense of place. And there's so many wonderful stories and so many interesting people that surround the sport. So um, it's hard to really label me as a sports photographer. I would say portraits and landscape are just as important to me as the mm -hmm. action. That's great. And you mentioned your Route 66, your grassroots baseball project. Can you tell us a little bit about the projects you're working on right now? Yeah, uh, so Route 66, um, I had my first book come out, Grassroots Baseball, Where Legends Begin, which is showing baseball all around the world in the different cultures. This is uh, a different project. You know, we've grown Grassroots Baseball now into a not-for-profit, and we're giving out equipment and doing uh, clinics um, and so grassroots baseball is growing and it's I'm just it's probably what I'm most proud of in my career is, is grassroots baseball so this next project is grassroots baseball route 66 starting in Chicago ending in Santa Monica and I did the first pass through last season and now I'm going back to shoot more because the project will also um, uh, be complete with a, a book grassroots baseball route 66 so it's it's the mother road Okay, so let's switch it up a little bit. What are a couple tips for somebody looking to up their sports photography game? Um, tips? Well, you know, it's a very tough climate out there for sports photography, as you know. I mean, it was tough before all this happened. And now it's even more difficult. So, um, you know, you have to, it's kind of going back to what can you control and what you can't control. So. Um, I would say upping your game, have a great website. There's so many platforms out there that you can um, create websites, not, not expensive, and you can, you can put a website together in a day. And when you do put your website together, you know, show that range of work that shows you can handle you know, any, any assignment that's coming your way. Make sure you show the range on your website and only show your best work. 
Uh, and some other tips I would say would be to get out there and shoot. It's really not about shooting on a professional field. Go out there and experiment. It doesn't need to be um, at the Oakland A's. It can be on a little league field. It could be on a, a kid's soccer game. It's really not the who that's important. It's the what. So create, try new lenses, try a new portrait lens and get out there and you know, shoot with something different and see what that gives you, what's your angles, chase the light. And I, I think experimenting on a not professional field for a sports photographer can really yield exciting results and maybe you know, create something new. I mean, you do the same old thing, you get the same old results. So last tip, I would say, I don't know if that's five, but my last tip would be find your mentors. I mean, my mentors have been just so important in my career and um, I'm grateful to them. They're my best friends today, still today. And um, if you can find a, a good editor as one of your mentors, then I think it could really help your career and move you forward quickly. Yeah, that's a great tip. And so let's get into some social fun questions. Um, so what do you do for fun aside from photography? I know you've been home because of the quarantine. Well, let me show you what I do for fun. <laughs> I'm uh, going to be cooking my son's lunch. Not that <laughs> cook cooking for my son is fun. It is a little fun, but um, I cook pizza for fun. Cool. Yeah. So I'm going to cook a pizza for you. How about that? Well, actually, I'm <laughs> cooking it for Simon, but if you were here, I'd, be, I'd cook one for you. I know. <laughs> um, so... Can we talk while I cook, or can I talk while oh, I Oh, yes, cook? of I course. So. All right, here I go. And so if you could photograph only one, either baseball or football, I know you photograph both. If I can photograph only one, baseball or football. I'm getting flour all over my shirt, Maria. Um, <laughs> baseball. Yeah. And East Coast food or West Coast food? Oh, now you're going to get me in trouble with my, <laughs> my East Coast friends. That's going to be a problem. Well, I like to choose sides, so I'm going to have to say West Coast food. What's your favorite? Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> now you're really going to make your New York friends pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, but I have to say there's great pizza on the West Coast. I, it's pretty amazing what they have out here. And I'm, I'm an East Coast girl still, but... Maybe after this video, I'm not going to be because <laughs> I might be losing a few friends. And what's your favorite stadium you photographed at? Favorite stadium I photographed at? That's a good question. I mean, there's some great ones and I have some, I would say Wrigley Field. Wrigley Field is my favorite because, not only because it's obviously one of the most historic stadiums um, in our country, but I had the opportunity to shoot the most historic World Series, modern World Series, the Cubs and, and Indians in 2016, and that was just an incredible experience to document. So because of that, I will. my answer is going to be Wrigley. Cool. And do you have a favorite photographer that you look up to? Favorite photographer? Michael Zagaris. Because why? He's a legend. He's a revolutionary, and he's one of my best friends. You do a lot of portraits of players and legends. Is there somebody you haven't photographed that you're dying to? Um, I guess I'm not dying to photograph anybody. I, there's some young players, Maria, that I'd like to get that I didn't get last season. Um, one that comes to mind would be uh, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. I photographed his dad, who's a Hall of Famer, Vladimir Guerrero. I photographed him both in the United States and the Dominican Republic. And his son is now on the Blue Jays, and he's just a powerhouse. And so I would love to document uh, him early in his career. I, I did get him in the Futures game, which is a, a game that showcases young players, but I don't have him in a Blue Jays uniform yet. I, he did come through San Francisco. I missed him. so. Vladdy Jr. is on my list. And oh, <laughs> if I could go back in time, since I guess I, I could answer, I would like yeah, to 
she's standing on a field with one of those fedora hats, like the photographer used to be able to stand right on the field and have Jackie Robinson like sliding into home, Yogi Berra's <laughs> at the plate. But that's probably not going to happen, but <laughs> that would be something I'd like to do. And if you weren't a photographer, what would you be? If I wasn't a photographer, what would I be? Well, I would be a pizza aiola. <laughs> a pizza aiola is a woman who makes pizza. Cool. And this one could use another minute, but Simon's not going to mind it like this. Um, so a pizza aiola, I'd like to do it in Italy too, since this is my fantasy. Uh, yeah, so a, a pizza aiola in Italy. That's great. Yeah. And what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Best piece of advice I ever received. I'm going to bring you back inside now. Tell Simon his lunch is ready. Um, best piece of advice I ever received would be to always have a plan. Brad Manchin, thank you, photographer. Always have a plan. You go to a shoot, be prepared. And aside from your camera, what's the best piece of gear? Um, besides from my camera, my best piece of gear would be, sorry about that. Um, besides my camera, my best piece of gear would be uh, my Gitzo monopod. Um, and the reason this is important to me is uh, lightweight, you know, the Sony's equipment is very lightweight, which is important to me being my size and weight becomes more and more of a factor each year for me, going on planes, putting in overhead bins. So everything lightweight is important. And this monopod is just terrific because it's sturdy, it's lightweight, it does the job. So I'm holding my 400 on this and it, it's just everything is made from carbon fiber. So it's just, uh, it's an important piece of equipment for me. Mm -hmm. And okay, hard question. If there were to be a movie about your life, who would play you? Ha. If there was a movie about my life, who would play me? Well, I'm going to say Michelle Pfeiffer. Cool. How's that? You know, but also, <laughs> have you seen Money Heist on Netflix? Yes. Okay, so, you know, I want to be Tokyo. I don't know what that oh says my. about me. <laughs> Probably not, not so good. That's so funny, but she, she's uh, really tough, so I like I her. I know, I know. Like, I want to be Tokyo. <laughs> I'm taking you outside now. And last question, who should we interview next? Last question, who should we interview next? Okay, I would say interview Andy Kuno. He's the one of the Giants team photographers. He's a really mm -hmm. interesting guy, um, photographs a lot of other things besides baseball. His father um, and his parents had a photo lab back in the day in San Francisco, so everybody brought their film to his parents. And he's been shooting um, the Giants since the mid-90s, I think, and he still takes a skateboard to work. That's his mode of transportation. Wow. And he's, yeah, I, I say Andy Kuno. Cool. All right, we'll definitely call him up. All right, well, I'm taking you outside now. Okay, Maria, well, this has been great. I really appreciate you calling. Thanks so much. So fun. I will absolutely give you a call on Route 66. Okay, awesome. I can't wait to hear all about it. Thanks so much for answering all my questions. <laughs>